Hello, and welcome to your 87th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca, and this evening I want to talk to you about understanding the SQL Server Profiler, typical uses of the SQL Server Profiler, how to create traces, and then I'll show you how to create, filter, and run a trace using SQL Server Profiler. After completing this tutorial, this is number 87, and the following three, 88, 89, and 90, you will be able to understand how and when to use SQL Server Profiler. Number two, create a trace. And number three, understand the advantages of running a server-side trace. Now, at the core of most enterprise applications is a relational database. Unfortunately, though, when the database is experiencing performance issues, so will any system that depends on it. Identifying the cause of a slowdown and correcting the associated issues can be a hassle. When it comes to relational databases, there can be any number of problems, including but not limited to high CPU usage, memory limitations, high disk activity, or slow queries. Now, for a new DBA, identifying these problems can be like looking for a needle in a haystack. To make matters somewhat simpler, SQL Server includes a tool called SQL Server Profiler that has the ability to capture almost any type of activity activity excuse me that can be executed against an instance of the SQL Server database engine. Okay, in this tutorial and uh, following tutorials to come, we're going to learn what SQL Server Profiler is and how and when to use it. We'll go through the steps to create, run, pause, and stop a trace. In addition, we will learn how to create a trace template that we can reuse. And finally, we will learn how to create a server-side trace that captures information in a less intrusive manner than interactively running the SQL Server Profiler GUI. GUI. All right, a little more about understanding SQL Server Profiler. SQL Server Profiler can capture any event from blocking to long-running queries. Over time, it may become one of the most used tools in your DBA toolbox. SQL Server Profiler can run interactively or as a server-side operation. If you plan to run SQL Server Profiler for only a short period of time, using the GUI is a good option. However, if you plan to run it for an extended period of time, you should avoid using the GUI because it can degrade the performance of your SQL Server instance. Instead, create a server-side T-SQL trace using a T-SQL script on the server. Both the methods I'll be explaining later. All right, now some typical uses of SQL Server Profiler. Um, SQL Server Profiler is, as I kind of touched on, it's a popular DBA tool. However, with the release of SQL Server 2012, it's been placed on the deprecated list. So it's going to be going bye-bye probably w very soon. And it will eventually be removed from the product altogether. Some may love this fact, while others may hate this fact. Something to note, SQL Server Profiler, it's going to be replaced uh, by the SSMS, the Management Studio Embedded Extended Events. It's called X-Events tool. And I'll be touching on that in a later tutorial as well. Okay, getting back though, even though SQL Server Profiler will eventually be removed as a beginner or even somebody that has, you know, moderately intermediate experience, you should consider using it as a precursor to extended events. Most of the information that can be collected in SQL Server Profiler will be available with extended events and you will be able to duplicate the typical uses of SQL Server Profiler with extended events. Some of these uses are as follows, and I have them outlined here. These are some of the major uses. We have performance tuning, detecting deadlocks, auditing, and detecting blocking. Again, these are only a few of the tasks that can be performed with either and as time goes on, and as your skills improve and sharpen, you will find several other uses for SQL Server Profiler. Now a little on creating traces. Before you begin to use SQL Server Profiler, you will need to understand a few terms. The first term I want to familiarize you with 
is trace. The SQL Server Profiler GUI creates a trace to capture server and database activity. The activity that is captured is stored in a trace file, which you can use to diagnose problems that might exist. No matter if you happen to be using the GUI or running the trace on the server, all the events are written to a trace file. Trace files are composed of events, which could be the execution of a query or stored procedure, a successful or failed login, a database data or log file growth event, or the acquisition of locks, just to mention a few. The trace file contains rows, and each row equates to a trace event, with complete information on the connection, the start and end time of the event, the application and host origin, and in many cases, the actual T-SQL text executed against the server. The events are grouped into event categories, such as the following. And we have locks, we have security audit, we have stored procedures, and we have key SQL. Now, this is a very short list of the event classes available via SQL Server Profiler. It's unlikely that you will ever use all the events that are included, but as time goes on, you will identify those that can be useful as situations arise. So now, it's time to dive in. And we won't be going to Management Studio for this, so you're going to get to see something a little different for the first time in a long time. So where we're going now is we're going to go to Start, and then we're going to All Programs, and we're going to go find our SQL Server 2012 folder right here. Okay. Oops. Wrong one. No, I had the right one. Excuse me. Yeah. Now we want Performance Tools. Uh, yeah. Performance Tools uh, folder. And then we want to click on SQL Server Profile. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Now it's going to ask us to connect in a similar fashion. Well, I'm already connected, but if you're not connected, it will ask you to connect in the same manner it would ask you to connect, just like you're connecting to the database engine. So go ahead and do that now. Click Connect, and then we're going to go up to File, okay? And then we're going to go to New Trace. Oh, excuse me, that's right. I'm not connected, my bad. Well, now you get to see what I was talking about. I am connected via Management Studio, but it, you have to do it for both. Anyways, okay, now, under Trace Name here in the Trace Properties box, let's change that to Long Running Stored Procedure, okay? So, okay. About Long Running Stored Procedure, okay? Good to go there. Alright, now we want to ensure that the standard default is selected in the Use the Template drop-down list, and yes it is right here, and then you can see we have all these other options uh, that are available. Selecting a different template will configure a predetermined list of events on the Events Selection tab, which I'll be discussing later, and we can always change this later, but we just want standard default for now. And in the next section, you can save the trace either to a file or a table. And this is important when you plan on analyzing the data later. You can always save the trace to a file or a table later if you fail to make that selection now. But for now, don't select either. The trace will be displayed in the GUI only for now, but later you can save it to another location if you wanted. Um, the final option is to enable a trace stop time. Now, while this is not a requirement, if you are going to run the trace interactively, you should definitely consider including a trace stop time. This will ensure that the trace stops capturing information that does not affect the performance of your server. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've just now selected the enable trace stop. And you notice it's one hour from the current time it should be for you, and that's what it is for me. So it's set out to one hour. You can change it to the time that meets your requirements if you want, but we're good with one hour. So now we're going to go up to the Events section tab here at the top, 
Okay, go ahead and click that. So this is where you select the different events that will be captured by the tray. Each event is grouped by event category. And right now, what I want you to do is clear all the events that we have checked here. All right. So, so clear all events. Now we're going to select the show all columns checkbox. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're also going to select the uh, show all events checkbox. Okay, now we see the difference it makes there. Now we're going to scroll down to the stored procedures event category. All right, store SP is what we're looking for. Here it is here, all these SPs. Okay, so now once we uh, scroll down here, what we want to select is SP completed. All right, and we also want to scroll down a little farther and select SP, SP, MP, complete. And that's right here. Okay, now once we have that done, we can go back over here and uncheck to clear the show all events. Okay, all right, so now we only have the events that we have selected checked off. Okay, that makes it easier on the eyes. Now, we're going to click the Organize Column button, okay? All right, now, once we've done that, we have this list here, okay? Scroll down the list until you locate text data, all right? There it is right there. Okay, go ahead and highlight that, all right? And now click up until it goes all the way to the very top of our list, okay? Cool. Now, once you have that done, click on OK, and then you can go ahead and click on the Run button, and depending on what is currently using your SQL Server instance, you may or may not see any events being generated. Okay. And, okay, there we go, see how it says Trace is running. Okay, um, now in the menu bar, once it's done, you would click File. Excuse me. Look. File and Stop Trace. And then we also have a uh, Pause Trace that we could select. Um, something to note when using the GUI to capture a trace, if you want to preserve the captured information, do not stop the trace. Instead, pause and restart the trace. If you stop the trace, all captured information will be lost. Okay? So that does it for this pictorial. Oh, and before I go, do not close this trace. We will be using it in some upcoming tutorials. So um, or either, if you close it, you'll just have to go through and redo it again, which whatever works for you. But um, if you plan to plow forward to the next tutorial, I would leave it up. And we're going to dive into filtering a trace next. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next tutorial.